Hi everyone, welcome to Handicrafts A to Z channel and in today's, I can't re really call it tutorial, but today we're going to talk about the uh, seamless version of the lane splitter and it's not all, all, all the, uh, only the seamless, but it also has some dra drast drastic changes in color. To start with, I have the permission for this tutorial from Tina Whitmer, so everything is legal. And also this is slightly different that you have already noticed, that the traditional lane splitter, the colors are different, the colors are changing, and in my version I have it like this. Can you find this, the seam? No, there is no seam. But gen in general, this is traditional lane splitter and I have about three skirts like this. I have a classic uh, lane splitter made with this yarn, but I didn't like it and I will explain why later on when I start this uh, math part. But generally, yes, look at this. So the new version will be something like this and looks great. So what we need is, I will switch off the camera and reposition it for the beginning. Now I can sit and talk. I feel myself more comfortable. I run into this beautiful yarn. It's Alize Diva and it's called Batik Design. You can see it's Batik Design. And when I used to have a workshop, I bought something like 10 kilos of these yarns, as you can notice there. The number of uh, lane splitters that I have and I have another bunch of different colors in and I use it for I combine it like I make the skirt and with the yarn leftovers I make the scarf in Irish crochet lace modern style so I have the matching suit uh, matching set for every skirt so like this like this like this this one is actually from the catwalk that I had back in uh, 2016 so if you find the Arish Krishna Lays by Alona Salimova on the YouTube you'll find the video of the catwalk on back of fashion nights and anyway so this is the yarn and it's acrylic it's very fine and very uh, microfiber acrylic so it's not really it doesn't feel like acrylic it feels a bit like cotton but still it is but so this is the sample it's been blocked washed and, and my gauge is using the needle size 3.25 millimeter I don't know what's that numbers but it's three millimeters point 22 uh, 25 and Using this, I've got the gauge number, uh, something like 23 stitches per 10 centimeters per 4 inches. And we are going to the math. In the classic lane splitter, what you do, you start from this corner and you increase until you get the right height of your skirt. Then you need some time in, in, in the direction that you choose, let's say this one or that one. And then you de decrease until you get to the last point. Uh, what I didn't like, I didn't like these corners, so I decided to remove them and just leave this part on. So this is the classic lane splitter. I didn't add this one here, but my version would look like the seam would go something like this and you wouldn't even notice it. Well, obviously it doesn't go this way because it might end go somewhere like this and end up over there and so what i have here basically is this you need a bit of a math but it's very simple uh, my kids study something like an official uh, fifth grade in the school is the pifagor theory there's uh some like like to find this x you have to have the power of both legs and since this part of our, our is equal because we start at exactly the amount of stitches uh, stitches here and here is that we get x po uh, power of two 
equal y to power 2 plus y power 2 or this. So in my case, to make it simple, I make the, the skirt which is about the knee, hi knee high and it's about roughly 59 centimeters. So my diameter, uh, the my di diagonal, the hypotenuse, I think it sounds in English, uh, is appro approximately 83 centimeters since I know the yarn is a bit stretchy after washing and after wearing and I because just because I know I was wearing the skirt and after 10 washes it made like five centimeters longer I stick to this number 83 centimeters it is a perfect size for this yarn and with my gauge I turned out to have something like 190 approximately was 90 something and I decided plus plus to salvage so I cast it on there's a single cast for the waist yarn 192 stitches with the waist yarn and to start with you do with a classic lane splitter you do the first row neat second one pearl so first uh, then the third one neat and third and uh, fourth one is also neat in this case since this will be the uh, the seam I want to have something that is easy for me to work on so it's either you start with one pearl row first and then you just go neat 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 pearl and so on or you do this one neat one neat next one is neat and then you continue with neat pearl neat neat and and so on just as is exactly as you do with the lane splitter and, and I've done about six centimeters already today and okay so we're done with the, with the knitting part, at least the basics. So it is generally exactly the same as you do with the classic lane splitter. I work about the yarn, back to the yarn. I work from two skeins at the same time, just like you do with the lane splitter. But if, with the lane splitter, you actually choose the, diff the different colors. So they actually, I don't know, mix up together. But with this one, I have to match up carefully so that, uh, as you can see, the color pattern here is very small. So if I would do the lane splitter, the skirt with only the single yarn, I would end up something like one row of dark, one row of medium blue, one row of lighter blue and an almost white blue. And so I don't like that and I want it to be the lanes will be wider and so I choose the the threads so that the pattern of the color starts approximately the same obviously you cannot pick up exactly like like up to one centimeter or millimeter but generally yes so you try to find the beginning of the color pattern just like this starts with the dark blue I find exactly the same on, on the other skin and I start working with the two skins at the same time. They are changing exactly the same as you do with the uh, lane splitter. It's just that you have to follow that the, the pattern so that the color that you have lasts longer. So this is it. If I kept only two, uh, only one skein, I would probably end up with very fine or something like this of the dark, this of the light, and so on. And okay, a bit of knitting, finally. As you noticed, you know, I'm drifting from one craft to another. It's just that I'm kind of a person of the mood. So if I'm in the mood for knitting, there's no way you can, you can force me to do the we carpet weaving. And if I don't like to knit or crochet or temari or weaving, no way I can do it. Anything else. So my tutorials are going like this. If I have fun and I have the mood, I can make like 300 of them.
in a row, well not 300, but at least 3-5 a day. And there will be days that I'll be doing absolutely nothing. But anyway, so today is the knitting day. You start with one, you add the second thread. And when you change the threads, what you have to do, you just use the, the thread that you were working on, wrap it around with the bottom, so it's kind of twisted and wrapped. So the currently working one is on the side, the new one in, just like you do with the lane splitter and with the lane directions. I forgot to mention the lane directions. I prefer to have it the lane going from the right hip, uh, left hip to the right knee. And so this way I do the increase at the be beginning of the row and I do the decrease at the end. If you like it to go the other way around, so like from your uh, right hip to the left knee, you do decrease at the beginning of the row and you do increase at the, at the end. As you can see, it's already have nice corner. And it goes like this. This will be my top, just because I don't like the way the, uh, the changing colors looks like. So that would go under the belt. And we will need that too in the later tutorial. So once, once I finish the, the, cloth, the cloth itself, there will be another tutorial for stitching it with a seamless stitch. And also will be another tutorial for the knitting on the belt, the waistline. Anyway, we are ready to begin. So as I said, that is the working line thread. And I wrap it around. And I pull it. So I'm switching the thread and I'm working with the spare one. You have to knit or purl the selvage. You have to work the selvage stitches at the beginning and at the end of the row. Just because first it, lo it's, it looks a bit nicer and elastic and you obviously don't want to walk like you have the lotus feet and as you can see it's stretchy and it also looks nice like this like this let me get the camera closer this is what it looks like handsome and the camera back. Now enough of talking, time to knit. So I need the salvage. Now I don't like the decrease increase right at the beginning of the row or at right at the end. It, it creates of nice mm, like steps that I don't like, like a ladder and the stairs and what I do I need the first stitch and then I increase one between the stitches and then I continue knitting just like nothing happens and we can talk for about two or three minutes while I knit and just to mention that th this this num this pattern is working for size with this particular yarn it works for size 14 to 18 it's a bit stretchy the yarn is stretchy uh, stretchy itself and the pattern itself makes the skirt very flexible so you can wear it from size uh, 14 to size 18 as i can say i dropped from size 18 to size 14 last year and I still wear that skirt of course obviously I had to change the rubber band inside the belt to match my current size but the skirt is still wearable and it 
if you if you're wearing something different you obviously have to make some more calculations I'll try to make it later on I'll add the calculations at the bottom uh, at, at the uh, at the information in the video if I ever have a chance to do that because right now my head is full of knitting and stitches and no math at all that's what that was the maximum math I could do for today it's really strange studying computer science for four years and absolutely no math left for five uh, for six months in quarantine it's really amazing how the human brain acts you know if I look into my code now I would say that I, I understand nothing what I wrote even thought I did choose the the subject for my diploma which is very close to me and craft related and everything to keep me interested but I don't know why probably when I get get away from this stress of COVID self-isolation due to weak health I don't want to take a risk because obviously I dropped off lots of weight and I have decreased the risk of diabetes but I still got some other health issues that I don't want to test and so as you noticed I'm doing the neat pearl neat and the next row will be also neat now we're about to decrease it's just the same thing that you start decreasing at the end of the row at the beginning of the row and then increasing at the end it just doesn't matter just keep the salvage row then the the next stitch uh, as as the border and then you do decrease and increase so right here and I leave four stitches so and I need two together try to keep the the second stitch above so you get the nice nice little decrease here like this so as you can see there's the the salvage line is straight there's nothing visible that it, there was a decrease here and so if you do like one or two stitches at the same time you can always use this method it's nice when you do the what was the when you need oh, I forgot forgot the terms I probably must have had it with the level of stupidity that I'm facing now probably I faced the COVID already because my brain is absolutely blank uh, reglan yeah that, that's the reglan so if you're knitting raglan as a separate details you can always have this when you're decreasing one by increasing by one stitch and it's nice to keep this the salvage line nice and straight so you can use that and we're turning back and as I said before you need this the first the salvage stitch so you will work it on at the beginning and at the end of the row and we do the knit till the end you have to watch with the yarn pattern itself sometimes the, they don't match exactly the same I mean even this in the same pack 
the skins might differ because some might have the darker line the darker part longer or white or shorter or anything so you have to watch and match so you don't end up with one row light the other one is dark and then again the light just try to finish the dark pattern and then switch to the new one so if you if you have to have to skip the color change once or twice do that without any hesitations it's it's not exactly the problem that you have to really worry about but so you can i will continue knitting and i'll come back to you with this tutorial probably in 10 days time when i finish the the main part of the skirt and we'll have the seams and the waist the, the waistline right the, to complete so it'll be another tutorial and so far i uh, will try to make more tamari to do the tamari i might try to do i don't know if about the internet but i'll see what i can do probably to show the thread changes at the salvage of the carpet and might be some some of the crochet because as i said before if i'm getting tired of one thing i switch to another and if i'm doing something obviously i want to do some tutorials to show you that so stay tuned for more have fun bye stay safe